Tashane Hill. Everyone give her a big welcome. So um, the struggle was real. <laughs> um, it had been, the year was about 2009. Um, my daughter and I, we had experienced another uh, rage of just uh, really bad luck, a lot of bad luck around that time. Um, the year after that was probably, it was about maybe three years afterwards. We laid in the bed of um, a tiny room that we now shared together as I stared at the ceiling. It was early one morning. Um, a lot of thoughts were just racing through my mind, like, why me? How did I get here? Why did this happen to us? Just a lot of doubt. Then a cloud of fear just really rushed over me, and I just, I just, I guess I had this really heavy feeling come over me, and my daughter turned to me, and she said, Mommy, can we go back to that church that we went to before? So it's kind of like she snapped me back into reality. And so I looked at her and jumped up and got dressed as fast as these legs would allow me. <laughs> um, we rushed to the church, got to church. Um, we're greeted by a group of amazing people. They were so warm, so welcoming. It, it was kind of odd because it was like, we were family, like they've known us for years. A lot of warm embraces, smiles. Um, that particular day, they asserted themselves and said, my daughter would be um, reading the daily announcements. The, as she, so she, had the, she got the opportunity to stand up at the pulpit and read the daily announcements. And then the choir, the children's choir director just, um, kindly asserted himself and said, she's going to be singing in children's choir today also. So she got a, a, a mini solo and um, also sang in the, in the choir. She was ecstatic. She was looking at me and smiling. Mommy, can I? And I let her do it. So songs were sang. Um, the, the words of the song or maybe just the songs itself just put, you know, they, were, they, were, they pulled at my heartstrings, is what people say. So I was just um, full of tears all the time while I sat in church. Um, this particular day, the, uh, after church was over, the pastor, um, they had a, a gathering. They, we, we needed to set up for another gathering. So there were, some of the women were in the kitchen area and doing their thing, and I went over to try to help out, and I was told, go help pastor. <laughs> So I tried to avoid him because um, he had like this fatherly uh, way about himself where it just seemed like they were just so warm. Where Has anyone ever had that where like somebody's so kind and warm, it's kind of scary, like they know you so well. So I tried to really avoid him. Um, but he, you know, uh, motioned for me to come on over and help him out. And they were setting up some chairs. So I set up, I set the chairs up and he turned to me and he asked, he said, so how have you been, young lady? You know, I've noticed that you've seen a, a, a bit down and out for a while, and you know, we're keeping you lifted in prayer, and you know, the battle is not yours. That's what I was afraid of. Those words that he says just always kind of hit me, hit my heart. So I'm, the, the words were choking up in my throat, and as I opened my mouth to speak, they just kind of, the words, Tears rushed down my face. And he looked at me and he said, what's the matter? What's going on? And I just start speaking words of doubt. I told him, his name was Reverend Barnhart. Reverend Barnhart, I can't get a job. No one will hire me. We don't have a place to stay. I just was going on about all this negative, 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 all these negative things that were going on. So he looked at me and he said, who told you that you can't? Who told you that you can't get a job? And what is, what is all this that you're saying? Don't you know who you are? Don't you know you're a child of God? And, you know, he said some other things that were really passionate and whatever, and I'm just standing there crying or whatever. And so he says, give me your hands. He takes my hands, and we say a prayer. And he just kind of reminded me, um, you know, the battle is not yours. This isn't, a, this isn't your battle to fight. So after we prayed, I felt a little better. 
went on about my day the that Sunday it was over so about Tuesday like I said earlier in the story it was rough <laughs> it was rough so um, about Tuesday um, I got a phone call and it was another another federal agency my goal was to get back in the federal government because I needed that security and just you know it, that I needed someone to kind of help me raise the kid. <laughs> so um, yeah, the phone call came through and you know, it was another job offer. They told me they wanted me to come and, and have an interview. And I felt excited about this one, but it, you know, it was only the 11th one within a year and a half. So, you know, I, well, I went to the interview and felt pretty good about it. But um, after the interview, you know, I, I went home and did my regular little prayer and whatever. And about two days later, I got a call and they offered me for the job. So it was a GS position. And I, like I said, I needed that security. Uh, no no um, benefits. <laughs> it was a temporary with no benefits. And, um, you know, I had to kind of earn my way in there. But I was ecstatic. What I did before I um, told everyone who helped me along the way and that, you know, just that tough struggle, um, I took some time to just stop and say a prayer and give thanks to God. And I realized that um, once I got out of my own way and allowed uh, life to just happen, because I was speaking all these negative words, but once I just allowed that to just be behind me, Doors start opening, I start meeting great people, um, and they just kind of help push me along the way. And so I just got out of my own way, and it was great. Thank you. Thank you.